Welcome. You're listening to Sports Ecom 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Russell Jackman. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. Today, it's baseball players whose last name starts with R. Uh, when are you going to have, when are you going to have a, some NBA stuff? I mean, it really is NBA season. Well, I know, but we got to finish off the World Series. So I, uh, I'm already done. I'm you're already, done. already done. Well, I'm it's already too- done with it. Once oh, the Dodgers lost, I was done with baseball. After the Dodgers lost? Yeah, that was my World Series. Watching the Dodgers lose. Oh, was okay. The of my World Series. <laughs> I was just saying, that, you're, I mean, you're a Giants fan. Yeah, and I've moved on to uh, to, to football and 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 basketball. Basketball, so. yes, yes, yes. Uh, what, which we will definitely get into. Um, in fact, well, we should probably have like NBA players last names are or something like that. But this there, time, I, there, I have a chance of. of, of you have a chance of getting it. Well, you know what? I'm going to just kind of look ahead of time here. Uh, you should know uh at least one of these how's that that's about what my percentage is that's what your percentage is yeah hey listen you're batting 333 that's not bad so uh let's see here we're looking at a couple of things uh baseball commissioner manfred is looking to lower the number of pitchers on a roster talk a little bit about strategy on that i'm thinking you know the hitters they'll have an advantage right because they're going to be seeing less pitchers but uh don't you think pitchers are going to get hurt more? Yeah, and it's a terrible idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get, and I understand the, uh, you know, it'll make the game go a little faster because you can't keep, you know, substituting pitchers. But still, uh, I mean, this is not like the uh, 1890s where you had a, a guy pitch a doubleheader. You know? Yeah. And uh, do you think no. do you think this will be the year for the Rangers? Finally, win, win a World Series. They lost to the Giants in I think five games, and then. They were one pitch away from beating the Cardinals and they lost that. What do you think? I guess I, you know, if, if the Rangers win, you know, I don't really care. And if the, if Arizona wins, I really don't care. This is, I'm, I'm totally unmotivated by okay. this World All right. Series. All right. Well, stay with us. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, along with Russell Jackman. So, um, th- did you uh, you hear about Tyson Fury beating Francis Ngannou? Uh, no. Okay, so this was a boxer, Tyson Fury, again, some mixed martial artist. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the boxers won every time because there were a couple of ones like this uh, in the past. I think, didn't Ali? Uh, yeah, the late Antonio Inoki um, uh, is... Uh... Uh, was one of the uh, uh, big um, uh, and matches. Floyd, in yeah, and we'll also, I can't forget can't forget Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, or or Hulk Hogan against uh, Rocky Balboa in Rocky Three. Uh, yeah, that's true. Well, that was a wrestler versus. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's, that's MMA. That's MMA for you. You have uh, boxing and wrestling. That that would count. Yeah. As, that, as, that was actually one of my favorite uh, uh, Rocky movies. It's, I, you know, it's, I think it's the best one. I, yeah. I know the first one has everybody, you know, uh, 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 a Twitter is, is the one that got the Academy. Just because it's the first one, you know, and but it gets you know, the Academy It's got work. some slow moments. It's, it's kind yes, of it slow. When you watch it back again, you let yep. go, you know, this isn't as exciting a movie. The one thing about Rocky Three is it's got Mr. T in it. It's got yep. Hogan in it. It's got you know, it's 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 got you know the the some of the classic lines like "What's your forecast for the match today?" and and Mr. T looks into the the camera and goes, "My forecast, pain." Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> one of the great lines. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna bust you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Good old Clubber Lang, and uh, in fact, that's that's one of the ones where. He loses and wins within the same, uh, yeah, the same, yeah, the same, same, movie. same yeah. movie, yeah. And actually, yeah. you know what's funny? Rocky Four actually has some really good music. If you yeah, go back not, and listen to the yeah. music, it's very, very good. Uh, living then, in America <laughs> with uh, with uh, James Brown. Yeah, uh, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about that one. Uh, I was thinking about uh, I think uh, Te- David Tepper, whatever. There ain't no easy way out. That's a really good song. Um, but uh, and then everyone, of course, you're. For, tries to forget Rocky Five. That was that was pretty terrible. Sure, sure. Well, yes, and then you know, then then there's the whole Creed 
um, line of movies too. So it, which which has been okay. I mean, it hasn't been. It was so weird just to uh, see Dolph Lundgren like really old, like you know, Rocky yeah. very old. I mean, it's just it's like kind of started. You know, you think of how how much we're aging when you when you see see that one and then in fact if i remember uh was it the movie airplane or what they had a, a you know the most iconic rocky poster is rocky right, right 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 and this is rocky 38 you know yes <laughs> well, rocky not that far defend. from rocky from from there being a rocky 38 you know we're, yeah. we're not that far away from that so <laughs> pretty soon pretty Sweet soon movie. Sweet but it definitely does, you know, the boxer versus the uh, mis mixed martial artist. Definitely, uh, it's it, always it's yeah. it's it's the it's the kind of thing that people always want to know. Like yeah. What's what's what is a bigger deal? You know, uh, it does a uh, hammer beat a saw. You know, in in oh yeah. You know, the, the, you always want to know: does a uh, sword beat a, a a a an axe? You know, and, and you does, always, does and does rock beat scissors? And does yeah. scissors really beat paper? And does paper really beat rock? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's interesting. And again, this is going back, I don't know, mommy, gosh, but mom and mom and dear, about 30, 40 years, maybe they, they had for fun on a, I don't know if, I guess they maybe they did it on TV too, but uh, yeah, where they, they said, you know, what would happen if Muhammad Ali fought uh, Rocky Marciano, you know, and, uh, it's interesting because I, I would have taken uh, um, Mike Tyson in his prime. I would take uh, Muhammad Ali. That guy, Muhammad Ali had skills and abilities to, to and strategies in the ring that unfortunately no one has ever had since. I think that that, that no one has had the, the, the brains in the ring the way that Muhammad Ali. Well, he definitely knew how to do it. That the, I kind of I wish that they would have done <clears throat> the Rumble in the Jungle with George Foreman in normal setting rather than in Zaire, where it was you know a million degrees yeah. and, and he didn't train right and his head wasn't in the game because Foreman was just a he he was a powerful puncher. And well, this uh, is why we have video games. The video games were, have been you know made to always do those kind of simulations to so that you could you know at least in a video game sense and using using statistics and computer stuff yeah. mm -hmm. then you can see you know that there are lots of uh, computer boxing games that allow you to to you know have tyson face muhammad ali or foreman yeah. face uh, joe lewis or, or yeah. that. <laughs> no that, that's that that's been around i, I remember one of the earliest games i played on an ibm pc uh -huh. a boxing game that allows you to have you know uh historical boxers face each other and i don't know though you know the, for the next generation of kids i'm not sure where boxing is going to wind up it's not that popular for the next generation no the mixed martial arts is really taken over yeah if it's yeah. between either wrestling or mixed martial arts their fighting thing is full and unfortunately boxing kind of falls by the wayside because it's, <laughs> it's kind of a you know a two-dimensional sport versus yeah. the, the the extra dimensions you get from either wrestling or our mma so yeah the only problem with the mma that i've seen uh is well sometimes they just get these guys in a hold and it just you know it's, it's sort of like when you're watching wrestling and the guys are taking a break and the, and they're you know that they're just catching their breath so they're just kind of holding on to each other um and so that part of it gets kind of like, okay, you know, as a fan, uh, it's like, come on, I want to see action. No, uh, the number one problem with wrestling is Dana White. <laughs> with the UFC, with ultimate fighting is, is Dana White. That guy is a piece of crap. And um, I wish nothing but the worst for him. Now, is this because he likes Trump or what else? No, it's because he's, uh, well, that's part of it. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that he hit his wife and, that oh. you know, he treats people like they literally are just, you know, his slaves to go in there into the uh, gladiator arena and just die. You know, he has that stupid slap fighting federation. Have you heard of it? Have you heard about that? No. Uh -uh. You haven't. OK, you'll we'll have to go to the Internet when we're done here and okay. look up the slap fighting league where he has a competition where guys literally, 
you know, one guy puts their hands on a podium and holds on while another guy hauls off and slaps the guy as hard as he can in the face. Oh, and then that, the other like guy really, goes. And then back and forth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To see which one, oh, you know, yeah. eventually gets knocked out. And 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 people love it, you know, even though it's it's got to be the stupidest competition I've ever seen in my entire life. It reminds me of the Monty Python get hit on the head lessons. Yeah. Why don't you just poke the guy's eyes? Can That's you? probably next, you know, <laughs> coming up. Dana. And he, you know, and Dana White doesn't care. He's like, you know, yeah. if people will watch it and pay money to see it, then I will oh, will yeah, do yeah. it. And I don't care what happens to the people who who compete, you know, even though there's probably going to be a lot of concussions and so forth. So you know, when I when I was a kid, they had midget wrestling uh in between still like, do. They, they still, still do it? Okay, I was wondering yeah. about that. Uh, because that was it, it's amazing. That was like when when big time wrestling was on when I was a kid, it was like rare. It was like maybe once a month at the most. Yeah, it doesn't happen much. I will say this in my experience of working with wrestlers, some of the nicest and politest and well mannered folks that I worked with were the midget wrestlers. Wow, well, and they actually they dwarfs, really not midgets, nice as I remember, but still, I, 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 Hemeculus, I think they call them. But uh, okay, you ready for our first trivia question here? Yeah, we're talking baseball players. Baseball players with last. I might do better on midget wrestlers. Okay, I'm sure you would. Okay, so this quote R won a National League and American League MVP in his career, in addition to batting for the Triple Crown. Who was this Hall of Famer? I don't remember batting for the Triple Crown. Huh. Okay. Who was this Hall of Famer that wore number 20? So, in fact, the, the big hint here is the fact that I think he's the only one who's ever won the MVP in both the National League and the American League. All right? Mm -hmm. That's our trivia question. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Russell Jackman. Uh, this first trivia question about a baseball player's last name R. This R won the National League and American League MVP in his career. And it says here, in addition to batting for the Triple Crown, but for some reason, I don't remember that part. Okay. Who was this Hall of Famer who wore number 20? Uh, Frank Robinson? Yes. Frank wow. Robinson. Very good. Wow. I, don't, I don't remember him triple. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, man. I was thinking of Yastrzemski, but he, he was the only one who batted over 300 in 1967, I think it was. You got uh, me on, and then they on raised all up. of that stuff. I'm just glad I got one question. Right? You, got, you got the one one. Yeah, the next the next two are going to be a little harder. That's okay. Yeah. You're, you're a man. You can take it. Okay. okay. So I don't know if you heard about this former NH NHL player, Adam Johnson. So he died in a freak accident during a game in England where a skate sliced his neck. Ooh. And I, I've heard of things like that before and they were able to you know, save the player and get him to the hospital, but this guy died. I'm wondering if they're gonna, if the NH NHL will take note and have players wear protective clothing around their neck area. You remember, um, was it Steve Yeager uh, for the Dodgers? Uh, he, he got hit like twice in the throat and that's when they came up with that hanging down catchers uh, yeah. to protect the throat. I wonder if, if I mean, I, I mean, this. I mean, it's a real flip, yeah. though. You think about how many other hockey games occur, and this has never yeah. happened. I mean, because you, you got to fall, you got to fall down, and then you got to have a guy skate come that close to your neck, and then you got to not be able to get it treated in time. You know, yeah. um, I'm just wondering. You know, every time something happens, you know, they seem to kind of come up with protection. Like, in fact, when uh, Buster Posey got nailed by cousins at uh, uh right. no council by council great council they changed the rules for the catchers uh oh yeah no yeah, yeah the buster well yeah, you know there, there there is a uh, meme that's out there on the internet that said that that um you know that hockey was invented in like you know the 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 uh, uh 1700s or something like that and then they finally you know uh uh they they developed a uh a, a helmet and then then like another 75 years later they 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 introduced the uh, athletic supporter you know in the cup and they said oh. you know it took, took them you know like 75 years to figure out how important that that body part was versus the uh versus the head so oh. you know the the, the uh, uh 
but they didn't require the helmet until like uh uh you know like 60s, late uh, yeah the yeah. late 60s or whatever so so you know it, it even though you would think like playing hockey without a helmet would be the most ridiculous thing in the entire universe yeah you know um it took hockey a long time to react just for that part too so so uh uh you know i i don't know i don't think they're going to wind up doing a lot to to protect it but i think maybe individual players may decide you know for yeah. you know i mean well what, what would it take really maybe like a scarf or something like that i, I was just thinking of that but you know i don't know how uh that'll make them sweat so much that the they you know it'd be a little bit too hard to move around um, yeah unless there's some way you can like alter the skate so that it won't you know be as as bladed sharp, but then yeah. that would slow that down, slows it down. Ability, you know or maybe they change the helmet to include a uh something that hangs down a little further but then it might alter your vision right uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let the hockey player players uh figure that one out yeah i um, know it's a terrible tragedy but i think it's yeah. just one of those things that you can't really avoid like the way that you know when a, a hitter hits a ball right back at the pitcher yeah you know it's like they, you just really can't protect the pitcher much more than what the pitcher already has going for him otherwise it's going to really slow down well in in mostly I, i've noticed in girls softball but uh probably in you know little league they they do it too where the pitcher can have like a face mask type of protection while they're pitching I don't that mind pretty- that you know I it's I think that that might be a good move because we, I'll tell you that is one scary thing the comebacker oh yeah you know, when you're a pitcher you're only you know uh 30 feet away from a ball going 100 miles per hour back 60, at 60 feet <laughs> yeah oh yeah but, but but still yeah it's coming back at you at over 100 miles an hour when it's hit off the bat and, yeah, and, you're only and the way you're, you're positioned you're not like ready for it most, no most, they mostly you know fall off the side and right stuff. right no yeah. it's you know it's you know it's bad enough that we had to put up the nets in front of everybody. just i was just gonna say that that i mean at least at least they did i think they did a pretty good job with making them fairly thin like i i noticed uh it's funny the last time i was on a cruise um i i, I didn't even notice until i was on the upper deck looking down at the pool when i saw i noticed these like little tiny fishing lines crisscrossing across the whole deck and i realized it was so that to keep keep the birds away um because the birds would constantly go out you know to try to eat people's food they follow the ships blah 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 and uh i guess these birds like they they realized nah, i'm not going to try to go through this little netting so in baseball they i think they've done a pretty good job of, of keeping it so that it's like not too uh much of a barrier yeah it's not too it's not it doesn't obstruct things it doesn't too much. Obstruct the view too much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You ready for a little a little controversy here? You always like the controversy. So yeah. or- Oregon coach Dan Lanning closed his post game with ex- with an extended speech on gun violence in America after the shooting in Maine. Now, my question is: Should he? Like if, and, and I'm, I'm not like, I'm not trying to say, you know, pro gun of anti-gun or anything like that, but when it comes to stuff like that, should you maybe have like a special press release or a press conference rather than using a post game to talk about things that have nothing to do with the game? Just, and, and my point is just like, if somebody was pro-life or pro-choice, should they, you know, use that uh, podium to, uh, to platform to air their personal feelings versus what's going on with the game. Well, you know, those post game conferences are usually pretty, pretty boring. <laughs> they're, they're pretty useless. I mean, yeah. I, I, I've never, I've never heard someone say, unless they see something very controversial that, you know, they, they, they say, you know, it's the coach's fault or it's the player's fault or something yeah. like that. You really don't get much out of those conferences True. than anything else. Now, on the other hand, if you're the team and the guy is saying something that is contrary to what the team's philosophy is, you know, uh, mm-hmm. that could be a real problem. And sure. so I do think that there's probably a better spot 
I mean, I, first of all, I totally agree with him that I think that 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 gun control is is out of control mm -hmm. in the United States. And we've had a number of terrible gun tragedies in the last you know week, you know, mm -hmm. and it really upsets me tremendously. I don't own a gun, mm -hmm. and I will never own a gun. Sure. Um, I I have two kids, and I think the only way I can guarantee their safety is to not have a gun in the house because mm -hmm. you know kids find stuff sure. and and even though you think you have everything you know locked down and all that stuff if you've got a key they can find where that is and you know kids see how prevalent guns are oh, yeah. today and they, they think that it's you know it's something that that they can just play around with mm -hmm. and, and and just the tragedies that occur. Plus, I just don't want my kids to think that violence is a way to solve. It's ironic that I'm a wrestling guy, but I, I, think, <laughs> you know, um, I, I don't think the way to solve a problem is with a gun. You know, I really don't. You know, I, it, it, it's, it's one thing to take a folding chair and hit somebody over the head with it. But when, <laughs> well, especially when it's scripted, you know. Yeah, but when it's a, it's a when it when it's a gun, you can't really once you commit to using a gun that's pretty much the end you know the, the it's it's going to end in a specific way and usually that's not going to be a positive one so uh, it's funny i'm i'm not uh it's so funny years ago i used to be anti gun like literally I, my attitude was only the police should have guns and nobody else that make it really simple right and then it was kind of I got educated a little more where it was like, okay, Edward, well, really, let's think th think this through. Okay, let's pretend that you do that. And everybody turns in their guns, uh, except for the police. Do you think the bad guys are going to turn in their guns? No. In fact, what ends up happening is that's at the when you look at and you see a sign that says, no guns allowed at this school, that's when the 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 bad guys take advantage of it because they know nobody else has guns. So well, you got to restrict ammo. That's why you have to. You know, that's that's actually more the. You, you know, you're right. If you don't produce if ammo, bullets cost a hundred dollars each. If bullets cost a hundred dollars each, you wouldn't have as many mass shootings because nobody could afford to mass shoot somebody. Uh, that you know, you know that, that's actually true. I don't. I don't know the logistics of how that would actually work. You shouldn't be able to go into Walmart and buy a thousand rounds of ammunition and no red flags are at all. You know, well, the, guy, the guy just says I'm a bad shot when I'm doing yeah, target practice. And, <laughs> and and you know what? If you're a bad shot, then you should have to go to a <laughs> to begin with. Hey, right. you got it. You got it there. All right. So uh, we're going to move on to our second trivia question here, talking about baseball players with uh, the uh, last name R. OK, so this Hall of Fame career Dodger shortstop played from 1940 to 1958. Yeah, I'm already out. I'm already mm -hmm. out of this one. You, no, you should know this one. Amazingly, the only major category that he led the league in was with runs scored in 1949 and stole bases and stolen bases in 1952. Wearing the number one, he went to seven World Series with the Dodgers. Of course, he only won one, which would have been 1955 against the uh, Yankees. But who uh, would, uh, oh, and come away with only one win. Yeah, 1955. Okay, so Last name R, who is this? All right, stay with us. So think about a uh, Hall of Fame Dodger, Dodger shortstop from 1940 to 1958. And he has sort of, sort of a cute nickname. Stay with us, Sports Econ 101, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Russell Jackman. So our second trivia question, baseball player's last name R, Hall of Fame Dodger shortstop played from 1940 to 1958. Who was this? I've got uh, the only Dodger I can think of this morning is uh, Dave Roberts. And I know that's not him. No, uh, no Pee Wee Reese. Pee Wee Reese. And okay. I know you know the name Pee Wee Reese. Yeah, but nothing, nothing <laughs> was coming to my mind today on that. So, yeah. sorry. Okay. Well, um, you're, you're going to hate the next question even more. How's that? Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm sure I will. <laughs> Okay. Next week, next week, let's hit the NBA up. Or yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so actually, let's 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 move on to the NBA. So, uh, holy smokes, Steph Curry is uh, looks like he's even better than he was before, huh? Uh, you know, it's still early, and there's still a lot of of season to go through. So, you know, we don't know if he if he's going to be healthy, but but right now his level of health is at its peak, and he's had a, a 
two 40 point games, you know, in, in out of three. Oop. Yeah. I am. And, and um, he really, uh, he is the straw that stirs that drink in, San, yeah. in, in for the Warriors. And, and, and Chris Paul is working out very well yeah. too so far. You know, it's been a short sample size, but I like what I see from from Chris Paul. He's really giving the Warriors what they need as far as a an alternate guard goes. I mean, uh, yeah. Paul both can shoot the ball, and he did really well last night against uh, Houston. And he's also handling the ball very well so when curry is out he can be a great point yeah, guard yeah, and, yeah. And, and no and he's uh, passing the ball he's not he's not hogging it now you said the rockets uh, he also i mean they also had the pelicans last night oh yeah that's yes yes yeah. they, they, okay. they, they beat the pelicans too and they beat them just so easily for a second of a back-to-back -back. i was really surprised and impressed at yeah. what the Warriors have done so i mean it's going to be a real log jam in the West. There's so many teams. And I was saying a couple of weeks ago about how, you know, there are a lot of teams that are all in on this season and that, you know, if they don't win this season, they're going to have to make some big changes. Everyone from the Lakers to uh, the Suns to the Warriors to Denver to uh, uh, the Kings to uh, uh, even Portland, you know, making big trades this year. You know, um, uh, New Orleans has a lot at stake. Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. The Clippers apparently just made a trade to get James Harden on mm. board. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard about that. Uh, uh, no, and uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, that just came through. That just happened last night is uh, 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 Harden will be moving over to the Clippers. Wow, from Philadelphia. Wow, boy, he's yeah. he's had a, had a lot of travels himself, hasn't he? Yeah, you know, for a guy that's that that wants to be known as one of the greatest NBA players of all time, he's really been shipped around. Him and and Durant have really yeah, moved I was around Durant quite also. a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, it, of, it's amazing how when they all played for Oklahoma, including Westbrook, uh, you know they. It, they just didn't meld together enough because, um, I mean, those are three really, really talented guys. Well, they didn't go to an NBA Finals. They did go they, to they an did. NBA True. Finals. True. So that, that, that's pretty good melding, but you're right. It's the, If they had been able to stay together and if they had added maybe one more big man to the mix, they probably would have, I mean, you know, they had um, uh, 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 some good guys there, but they just didn't quite have enough size, I think. At, at every yeah, position. that's that, that's true. Boy, I tell you, Denver is still looking really smoking, and uh, and the Celtics with Porzingis. I mean, he's 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 sort of kind of you didn't hear about about much of him last year, but uh, you know, when he was with the Knicks, he was doing really well, and uh, that there that Celtics team is going to be really, uh, I don't know, I could I could easily see. Uh, a Celtics Nuggets uh, finals. Yeah, the Celtics are all in. Another one of those teams that invested a lot in this season to try to win after not coming short a couple of seasons ago. Um, Philadelphia is another team that, you know, if they don't succeed this year, what's going to happen with all of their talent? Um, you know, don't, they, they, don't forget the Spurs, man. When they got, they get Wemby. <laughs> the guy's Wemby, Wemby looks like the real deal. He really yes. looks like, like, they may have another Tim Duncan on their hands or maybe even yeah. more talented than Tim Duncan because mm -hmm. of his age and, and his size. I mean, he's even yeah. bigger than Tim Duncan was and he's looks like he's even more aggressive defensively than Tim Duncan, which is saying something because Tim Duncan in his early years, people sort of forget this is in his later years, he was sort of more of a finesse big guy than he was, you know, a physical big guy, but he, yeah, was you know he led the league in blocking and he and he and he got defensive player of the year a couple times and mm -hmm. I mean, tim duncan sort of flies under the radar when people talk yes. about the you know, greatest yeah. power well, because he, like he wasn't that. very animated except for no. when he'd have that run in there was that one referee for some reason he used to have a, a he and a, i mean he seems like the nicest guy in the world uh tim duncan and but for whatever reason this one referee and him used to butt heads yeah yeah well they, they, you know you, you can't get along with everybody and yeah. when you're a, uh, a a huge talent like that you know sometimes you just 
you will attract detractors, you know, just by, by your very nature. And so, you know, that's just like, uh, Steph Curry has some, some reps he doesn't totally get along with too. So, you know, oh. it's, it's, even, even when you're the nicest guy, it yeah. doesn't always work that way with refs. That's maybe why there's still uh, the, the, the idea of, you know, getting either more refs involved in the game or, or having, you know, a computer starting to judge certain elements of the game is, is. Well, that's going to be challenging. I mean, yeah, you, you have too many uh, replays or something because it's, it, it's at least in, in baseball, like an umpire, a home plate umpire can pretty much stay put for the most part. Right. But basketball, I mean, you gotta, unless you're going to have 5,000 cameras at different angles, you know, I mean, you might be getting there. Speaking of, what do you think of this in season tournament that they're doing in the NBA? I, I don't. I have to. I guess I have to experience it first to 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 see how well it's going to be. I mean, it's kind of a neat novelty. Um, but I, I don't know. What do you think about it? I think it's stupid. I think it's yeah. it's it's dumb to have a distraction during yeah. the season. Winning an NBA title should be the goal of every NBA player, and doing it in the middle of the season tournament. I know they do that in soccer. But I just think that it's it's. I don't think players are going to take it that seriously. I I mean, yeah. it's all for just a cup and some money. And and if somebody gets hurt pursuing yeah. that, I mean, it's it's weird because they integrate it with the regular season. So so there are games that would normally count towards being in the NBA. You know, for your NBA championship, mm -hmm. those count as well. But you you still have to. Uh, 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 play in this tournament I just think that there's going to be a number of players that are just getting because you have that and you have the counterbalancing of of load management and and even though those rules have changed too yeah you, you you're gonna have to find a way to make sure that you have the best record at the end of the season I think that's still yeah. a major goal for everyone well and look I, what happened you know the NBA uh all-star game used to be really really fun to watch and then it just got kind of ridiculous. Same thing with the baseball all-star game too. That, it used to be, you know, the highlight almost of the, of the season. And well, the irony, I think, with the NBA all-star game <laughs> is that it is a better version of the slam dunk contest than the slam dunk contest now. The, 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 what the, what yeah. the all-star game has turned into is basically a roving version of the slam dunk contest plus the three-point oh. shooting contest. That yeah. You, you have yeah. one of two things going on in the all-star game. You have either guys shooting threes from, you know, 50 feet out. Cause they are just like, you know, Hey, what, you know, let's see if I can, you know, make the, the, the highlights. And then yeah, yeah, you have yeah. guys with nobody in front of them running the entire lane and, you know, doing, you know, a uh, 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 windmill dunks and, and all that stuff to show off to their friends. So, you know, but ironically, none of those the none of those guys are doing windmill dunks in the All Star Game will sign up for the uh, slam dunk contest anymore. And so you, you know, you know, you get you know uh, 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 guys like why you know, is, is do you think it's because it's there's there's too much like they look silly if they don't make the dunk? I think that they just it doesn't mean anything anymore. That, 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 yeah. that it's not the kind of because they've watered it down so much. They put so many marginal players that you never heard of into the slam dunk contest it doesn't mean anything it meant something when michael jordan was facing dr j yeah. you know then you have to or dominique wilkins was in there or yeah. you know sean kemp was in there or or spud even, Webb. yeah well, even spud, spud web yeah guys really wanted to win to beat the other guy but now it's more like oh you know since blake griffin jumped over the kia and and one you know they, everyone's been trying to do some crazy yeah. prop type you know uh uh uh, uh performance and it's it, it becomes <laughs> silly it's not it's not something that that i you know and i also think that they they if if i were to redo the draft the the uh draft if i was to, re, to redo the dunk contest this is what i would do i'd have the first one would be um uh seeing how far you could jump to make a dunk so from like the free throw line or yeah, that's what jordan that's what jordan did i remember right yeah. 
Yeah. The second one would be um, you know, they have a a little device that that they never use in the NBA, but I wish they would. They uh, saw it a number of years ago. They have a little camera in on the um, actual uh, 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 rim, and uh -huh. it checks how fast you dunk and with how much power you dunk. And so I would love to see like a measurement of like power and like you know. Well, yeah, you, you, you gotta get, you gotta get Daryl Dawkins back in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see how hard, you know, artist Gilmore, you know, yeah. how hard you can throw down. The, the problem know, is you have to have a different, uh, I mean, even with these breakaway rims, uh, I've seen it where it's off kilter and, and then it takes them half, 45 minutes to fix it. So uh, not sure about the speed, you know, the, 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 that unless you're going to have some separate rim that they do. Actually, you know, it'd be kind of fun. How about if they raised it to 11 feet? You know what was interesting about that is that they tried that. They, they, they tried that for a couple of uh, exhibition games. And the interesting point was that even at 11 feet, or I think they made it 12 feet, even at 12 feet, there was still dunking. People were still finding ways to dunk. But what it did was it made outside shooting fall right into the toilet. Oh, I bet. Is that guys couldn't yeah. hit an outside shot any longer. You change, they're so precise on how yeah. to hit a three-point shot that it, <laughs> well, it, it would I, I think it would, it would I mean that would ruin their quote career because it's sort of like you know okay let's let's play baseball let's with a tennis ball I mean that'll ruin your arm so the same sort of thing <clears throat> okay we're gonna go to our <clears throat> last trivia question here thank goodness for you right yes uh, a baseball player's last name ending in R this hall of fame R was a pitcher mostly with the New York Giants in the 1890s Oh, he was please. a 20-game winner eight times and a 30-game winner four times. He also threw for a triple crown in 1894. I guess that's uh, ERA and all that. Who is he? I'll give you a hint. They, they called him the Indiana Hoosier. And I, I, I told you this before, that he threw so fast that it's because of him that the pitcher's mound was moved back to where it stands today at 60 feet, 6 inches. That's our trivia question. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back with some closing comments. Don't touch that dial. Yeah, well, it's from the 1800s. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. All right. Here's our last trivia question. Hall of Fame R was a pitcher, mostly with the New York Giants in the 1890s. He was a 20-game winner eight times, a 30-game winner four times. Also threw for a triple crown in 1894. I'm sure that's not the hint that you needed. Uh, he was called the Indiana Hoosier, and it was because of him who he threw so fast that they moved the pitcher's mound back to 60 feet, six inches where it stands today. Who is this famous pitcher? I just want to go on record and say, I'm really disappointed you didn't find a way to work a trivia question in about Rick Rushell. Because ah, that, uh, that would have been double R's. Yes, that, that, that would have been, I was hoping somehow, and Rick Russell is old enough, but I don't think he, he, he pitched in the 1800s. No, he didn't, but uh, this is Amos Rusi. You, I, you, you, we could have been here all day, and I would not you have. You wouldn't have gotten, you wouldn't have gotten Amos Rusi? Come no, on. No, I man. don't, I've never I thought he was your favorite pitcher from the 1800s. Never heard of him. Before. Never? Oh, man, you look him up. And again, it's because of him. He was so he was such a fast pitcher. Uh, I don't know how many, you know, maybe through, you know, in the high 90s or 100 miles an hour, who knows. But that's why they moved the pitcher's mound back. Okay, are you ready for our thoughts for the day? After that trivia question, you know what? Maybe I am. Maybe you are. Okay. So when I was a kid, my dad got fired from his job as a road worker for theft. I refused to believe he could do such a thing. But when I got home, the signs were all there. Oh. The signs were all there. Okay. All righty. And uh, when I told the doctor about my loss of memory, he made me pay in advance. You know, that, that's smart doctor on that. All right. Tune in next week to Sports Ecom 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Adios. So long.